What's going on? It's your boy. What can I change? So, as soon as I saw this video, um, or I, I saw a little bit of it, um, I decided to go ahead and make a video on it. I haven't seen the whole thing. I've seen about a minute so far, but um, this video is probably going to be a little bit more serious, you know, um, because we are dealing with tragedy. Um, but this is this is really what I want to see. It's really what I want you guys to see. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, but um, I don't even know what to say, really. Let's just get into the video. There are plenty of reality shows that document weight loss, but My 600 Pound Life stands out as it focuses on the lives of real people. Unfortunately, that means viewers get an intimate glimpse into the sometimes tragic outcomes along with the successes. Here are the My 600 Pound Life stories that didn't end well. Dr. Now may seem like an unlikely reality TV star. However, he's the only person who appears in every episode of My 600 Pound Life, and his skills in the operating room are the reason why. The veteran surgeon isn't known for his small talk, but he clearly lets his patients know what they're facing without diminishing their humanity. Oftentimes, Dr. Now offers his patients a reality check on the conditions related to obesity. According to a journal published by the National Center for Biotechnology Information, complications can include high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, sleep apnea, stroke, heart disease, depression, cancer, arthritis, and gout. Did you guys hear all those um, complications that can come with it? The ones that people choose to ignore? The ones that people decide, oh, you know what, no, I'm perfectly healthy, I'm fine. It's going to be a hard one for me, guys. Like, I, I can already feel it. Um, because it just makes me so sad. It really does make me so sad. Especially coming from it myself, but this just what I'm about to see in these people's lives. Um, just that first part was pretty sad to me, you know. All the stuff that can come with it. Um, I'm, why do you, why do you guys have to miss it? You know, that's what I, I don't understand. Like, why, why do you have to do this for fame and fortune, right? Like, why is it so important to you to be obese and encourage other people to do it? Why is it so important to you that you're willing to risk other people's lives to lie to their face? I just do not get it, man. Let's roll on with the video. Now that you had the surgery, the physical drive to eat is gone. So you have to deal with what is driving you to eat. Many patients on the show successfully lose weight after therapy, diet modifications, increased exercise, and weight loss surgery. But sadly, some of the show's stars can't make the lifestyle changes or pass away due to the stress on their bodies. Uh, let's just start right there right quickly. Um, that first part where you just showed that, I don't know if that person was um, dead in that ambulance, but man. This is... This is what you guys fight for. This is what you guys want, Tess, Mashade. I mean, this is what you want. If somebody's 500 pounds, you want them to just keep going and just love themselves because I can't tell health at every size. I can't look at them and tell them, tell them that they're about to go away. That you may tragically die in the back of an ambulance because your body just can't handle the dress anymore. That's... You guys make me so upset. Like, I've said it before, you guys make me sick, and last time, you know, I kind of made it more of a, a, a yelling thing and an anger thing, but in reality, this is how I really feel, you know. It does make me angry, but it makes me more upset than anything. It's just so disappointing. It's so disappointing what you guys are doing, you know. And it's not just y'all. Y'all are just the ones with the biggest mouth, like I said before. But I just can't do it, man. And I've seen, and I've seen the male um, plus size models. I've seen those guys. What are y'all doing? You're doing the same dang thing. Don't think I won't come across one of y'all's videos. Because as soon as I do, 
I've seen y'all's pictures, but I haven't seen the video. I will come across them. And I, I don't care if I get a hundred views or five views, you will be found out. And you will hear from real obese people, you know? Because I'm sick of this, man. I'm so sick of it. And I know this is a battle that I'm probably going to wage. Probably a good part of my life. If I, Lord willing, I get to live another 50 years. Man, even 10. I've been all 10 of those years speaking up. All 10 of those years. Because it is. That's what I want to Robert's situation was dire from the outset. It didn't take long for Dr. Now to discover that Robert not only weighed nearly 850 pounds, but that he also had an addiction to painkillers. I hate that this is our life and that this is Rob's life. Good call the wings, love wings. But nothing stops him from eating. After a rocky start, Robert was able to finally get some control over his compulsive overeating. The New Jersey resident had a lot of love on his side, including that of his mother and his fiancée, Catherine. With that support and a whole lot of work, Robert managed to lose a significant amount of weight under Dr. Now's care, almost 350 pounds, including the surgical removal of a lymphedema mass. Unfortunately, the surgery left Robert depressed and longing for painkillers again. He even tore his own stitches hoping to get more of them. Tragically, Robert passed away from a heart attack in November 2017 at 41 while the show was still filming. Dr. Now was not shy about expressing his frustration at the medical system for its complicity in Robert's addiction, which ultimately killed him. He also hailed him for being a fighter. He knew that he was running against the clock and his body gave up. But he never did give up. That's pretty sad, man. That's that's pretty sad. You know, with the with his health and his addiction to painkillers as well as food, man, it's it sucks to see him go like that. Uh, especially at 41, man. My dad is like 60 something. I was born when my parents were about 40, so imagine that. Me losing my dad in my first year of life, you know. That's just crazy to think about, right? Like, as soon as I was born, my dad was gone. I don't think about that. Yeah, man. That's rough, brother. That's rough. Few of the stars of My 600 Pound Life are more notorious than the Asante brothers, Stephen in particular. And Stephen Asante suffers from severe psychological issues, so he's going to be a unique case. The pair may be bound by blood, but Stephen's antics ensured that he and Justin were not brotherly to one another. For one, he pretended to be following Dr. Now's strict diet during the show, but was secretly binge eating. Additionally, he would manipulate and bully anyone, including his father, to get what he wanted. He also continued abusing painkillers, including stealing Justin's while he was healing from his gastric bypass. He's a big boy that just tortured me all day. Because of Stephen's continued and repeated abusive behavior toward his brother, which started in childhood according to Justin's Reddit AMA, Justin ended up quitting Dr. Now's program in spite of both his father's and the doctor's best efforts. He also accused the show of blackmailing him in a now-deleted Reddit post. As of mid-2019, he lives in Rhode Island. It appears that Stephen is out of the program too and is now living in Iowa with his new wife, according to Starcasm. You see that right there? You see that right there? It's more important than those boys just quitting. Think about it. You get into this obese life, you ain't wanting to change. That boy was manipulating and bullying people into food. Now, he may have already been a bully before, but nonetheless, listen, these big people, they're going to get what they want. They need that food. They're going to get it somehow, some way. Because, listen, I want to welcome you to the obese life. Come on in. Let me open the door for you right quick while I got a little bit of time. Let me go ahead and open this door for you. Come on in. Oh, yeah, you're going to get to eat whatever you want, player. Oh, yeah, you're going to get to do all that. And you get to love yourself as well, you know. Forget what other people say. They call you fat. Forget them. They're fat phobic. Don't worry about them, brother. Come on in here. Now, a couple of us are going to die. A few of us are going to die quite a bit. Uh, some of us are not going to be able to walk anymore. We're going to get to that point. We're going to get rashes. Some of us have diabetes. Our legs are going to get taken off. Um... You know, we're going to build up fluid in our legs um, due to our obesity. And there's a good chance some of these people in here are going to stroke out. 
and we'll never hear from them again. And you know what? But that's okay. They're living life in their bed at 500 pounds, 6, 7, 8. You name it, baby. We got it. Oh, we got all the complications ready for you, too. You need a heart attack? We got you. Diabetes? We got you. Heart? You want a stroke? We got you. Do you want to not be able to walk and play with your kids? We got you, my friend. Don't even worry about it. You can come on down, and we're going to welcome you right on in. You want to kiss your life goodbye? Come on down. You know, don't worry about it, though. Yeah, a couple of us are going to get to do some modeling gigs, something like that. You know, make a little money, a little change. You know, get whatever the magazines, we're going to say whatever the magazines want us to say, because we're trying to make this bread, whether we believe it or not. So come on down. Welcome. I'm so glad you made it. Let's continue the video. Sean Milliken seemed like he was moving in the right direction after a rocky start on his weight loss journey. After initially weighing in at nearly 900 pounds, Sean was finally able to turn things around and get weight loss surgery. That, in turn, helped him drop hundreds of pounds and regain his ability to walk, according to his follow-up on My 600 Pound Life, Where Are They Now? And now I can hit all these goals in the next year. And that's what I'm determined to do. But in 2018, tragedy struck when Sean's mother passed away, according to TLC. Understandably, he was devastated as he and his mother were extremely close. Subsequently, he had to move out of his Houston apartment. In yet another sorrowful turn of events, Sean passed away in the hospital due to complications from an infection in February 2019. TMZ reported that his father wrote on Facebook, he was having problems with his breathing. They were able to resuscitate him, and a short time later, his heart stopped. Sean was just 29 years old. Wow, what a young man. He's just a year older than me. And he's already gone, man. They said he died from an infection. We pretty much know where that infection came from, man. If you guys don't know, when the bigger you get, and I've dealt with this too, we do get rashes underneath our folds. So those folds and everything can create rashes. Um, I've seen it to where <clears throat> some people, they've created holes. For me, it's created rashes. But uh, some people, it's created holes. Their skin starts getting eaten up. Um, it's created, it's called infections, um, open sores. And that stuff, I mean, if not dealt with, will take you, man. Um, and it says he also couldn't breathe and um, his heart stopped. Here's the beautiful thing about also about this life. Um, you think you can come on down and um, lose the weight. That's why I always push this for people. It's not always about losing the weight, you know. Um, but getting healthier, weight loss would be a symptom. It's a very important uh, symptom. But that doesn't mean that if you're 600 pounds like these guys, that if you start dropping on the weight, your complication go away. You know what I mean? That's what I've been trying to tell people. That like, Just a little bit of weight that I've lost. It doesn't really mean anything. I still can have complications. I can still have 117 um, beats per minute, which I've had happen. Uh, it's got to be a continual thing. I got to continue to be healthy, continue to lose the weight. Just losing a little weight doesn't mean anything to nobody. And that's what I'm trying to say. These girls, that these women who are not quite 500 pounds, not quite six, but they're still in the 300s, it ain't better. It's not. Yeah, maybe your complications aren't as bad as this, but it's not better. It, it just takes one wrong move, my friend, and it's over for you. And life is not better, obese. Don't give me that trash. That man died at 29 years old. 29. Even though he was losing weight because he was still at a bad, he was still at a significant weight. Dead. I hope you hear that. He ain't he ain't on TV. He ain't on the news. He ain't in body positivity. No fat acceptance. No fat phobic. None of that. He's dead now. Think about it. Having the courage to work with Dr. Now and appear on My 600 Pound Life isn't easy. And unfortunately for some patients, they're just not ready to conquer their addiction to food and completely overhaul their lifestyle. Such is the case with Penny, who appeared in season two. I let food be the way that I found solace. She was initially able to lose 40 pounds on a controlled diet, so Dr. Now approved her for weight loss surgery. But after Penny's gastric bypass, she gained 5 pounds when she should have been losing weight. 
It appeared she was secretly having food brought to her. Penny eventually left Houston and moved back home to Maryland, quitting the program altogether against Dr. Now's professional advice. In her follow-up episode, he stated plainly that her addiction will kill her. Either people around here stop enabling her, <laughs> or her addiction eventually is gonna kill her. Penny's Facebook account has been mostly dormant, which only fuels speculation that her diet is not going well and seems to confirm what Dr. Now called her, quote, delusional thinking. You know, that's the beauty of this life. People think that, um, listen, it's really not that great. This thing, like I said, takes over your whole mind and everything. I used to imagine that being me sitting on that bed with all those groceries. Because it's so easy to just turn back. Just because you've lost a little weight, like she did. She was sneaking food. You get right back into the obsession. Now you're right back where you're at. She's got a kid at home. Yeah, little boy right there. Uh, okay, little boy, little girl. And she's willing to just do it anyway. Because that's what happens. Once you really get in this life, and it takes over your whole body. That's why you see some of these obese people who are bigger and have a big voice. Say nothing changes for them. Yeah. She got tested, you decided to lose a little weight. But ultimately, she don't care about it. If she wants that food, she's going to do what she got to do to go get it. The same thing for any of these obese people out here. You know? Amberlynn Reed, look at her. She's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger over the years. I did the same thing. I got bigger and bigger and bigger over the years. I've seen my friends get bigger and bigger and bigger over the years. Because we don't care. We need to eat. And we're going to get it how we got to get it. No matter how broke we are, we will figure out a way to keep eating how we eat. That's sad to see that she's got a kid and she's just not even willing to turn around and look at that. But you know, I wonder if she loves herself though. Dr. Now is known for giving patients the hope they need to turn their lives around and the tools to help them on their journey. That's what Kelly Mason was looking for when she made the trip to Houston to meet with the famous surgeon. Every day is a bad day and Every step is torture. When she arrived, viewers learned that she had a host of health issues, including high blood pressure, a blood clot in her leg, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, thyroid issues, reflex, and heart problems. It was clear that she needed help. Some days it just feels like um, it would just be easier if I wasn't here. People could just move on. Things started looking up for Kelly when Dr. Now admitted her to the hospital, where she was able to lose over 200 pounds. She then had weight loss surgery and dropped another 100 pounds. Upon discharge, she was hopeful and committed to sticking to her diet and exercise regimen, but Kelly's heart had already suffered too much stress despite her best efforts. She passed away in her sleep of a heart attack in February 2019, according to Inquisitor. Dr. Now pointed out, however, that she hadn't returned to her old habits. She went out fighting. She lost 300 pounds, guys, but it was too late. It was too late to turn it all around. And that's, see, that's, and that's where people get to, man. People get to a place where either they're like, it's too late now. I might as well just keep it moving. That's why I think people get up to this weight. I got to this place. Like I said, I don't feel like I'm above them. I, I feel like I'm 800 pounds, you know? I'm not dealing with what they're dealing with by the walking and all the stuff and having to be bedridden. But I just feel like I, I got the mindset to just keep on going. Doesn't matter. She had a host of problems. And even when she still lost her weight, she still died. That's just a lot to soak in, man. I got, um, I'm not saying I'm speechless because there's so much to say, man. But what, just thinking about her, just in her last moments, she thought to herself, man, I've done all this, but it, it's too late, man. It's too, it's too late now. I've destroyed my body and I tried. It's too 
Like many of the stars who appear on My 600 Pound Life, James was initially unable to leave his bed due to being almost 800 pounds and had a painful skin infection. But even though I still open my eyes each day, I'm not living life because I'm just trapped in this bed all day. Additionally, James's family had made some huge sacrifices for him, including his daughter dropping out of school to care for him, and his father refinancing his home to get him to Houston via ambulance to see Dr. Now. But when James arrived in Houston, he hadn't lost the weight Dr. Now required him to. He dropped a bit while supervised, but soon thereafter, viewers learned that James had instead gained enough to weigh in at 840 pounds. Eventually, Dr. Now told him to leave if he wasn't willing to stick to the program. My dad's gotten worse, and I'm worried that he's close to losing it all. He basically already has. When TLC caught up with James a little later, things hadn't improved. In fact, Dr. Now called Adult Protective Services on James's girlfriend when he discovered James was suffering organ failure, and she was still bringing him food while in the hospital. Dr. Now dismissed him once again, citing his inability to make changes. Wow. Wow. So, one, his daughter had to drop out of school to help you? That's tough, man. And you see what that woman would do? And that's what gets me so furious, you know? When, I, when pe some people think I might be going to the extreme, I've had some people say, oh, wait, wait, them glorified obesity or anything like that, that's not, that's not promoting death, Trey. You're not saying that they're leading them to death. That's crazy. Is it? Is, are, are the people who are saying it's perfectly okay, are they any different than the people who are literally feeding the food into his mouth while his organs are failing? Are, are they really that different? They're just being led by vocals. You might as well have picked up the spoon and say, it's okay, love yourself. Michelle McDaniel made a video that I was seeing about the, the, uh, uh, the therapist, right? He said it's okay to just eat whatever you want. Eat donuts. Feed yourself. Feed into that addiction. So tell me that's not the same damn thing as somebody who is feeding somebody to death. He was literally dying. And she did not care. She kept feeding him anyway. You tell me if that's not the same damn thing these people are doing, man. Tell me it's not the same. You're just really leading them to death. Because if you let somebody just feed their addiction... What do you think the end result's going to be? Every year of life doesn't mean you're living. Don't let this get fooled because you see people making it into their 40s or 50s. Like, oh, well, I can do that. Did you hear that man, what he said at the beginning? He said, I'm trapped in my bed. He's not living. But he wasn't willing to give it up either. He just let himself continue on. And now he had no help. Pretty much. It looked like some people were willing to get him there, but then he had a, some, uh, uh, his girlfriend who just said, you know what, forget it, I'm going to feed you anyway. And he gave in because he did what he's always done. Uh, I feel sorry for the little daughter. I don't know if that man's still alive, but man, his daughter's going through it too. I wonder what it's like seeing your dad eat himself to death. You know? It, I mean, whatever. Whatever, man. As viewers learned on her episode, Shanae endured an extraordinarily difficult childhood. In order to cope with the pain, she turned to food at an early age and slowly grew to be 780 pounds. Food made me feel better. It made me feel happy. Hopeful that she could turn her life around, Shanae turned to Dr. Now for help. But she was never approved for weight loss surgery because she refused to follow the diet and exercise plan Dr. Now gave her. She and her husband were even caught ordering pizza and burgers to her hospital room. You both need to stop lying. If you come here to have weight loss surgery, you haven't lost any weight in four months. Why? Since the show, Shanae has posted a handful of videos on her YouTube channel, some of them from hospitals as she struggles with her health. And while she claims to have lost weight on her Facebook page, any progress appears difficult to discern. It's hard to let go, man. It's real hard to let go. You know what's crazy to me is how uh, we just went after a story that a girlfriend just did that. Now the boyfriend you in on it too, you know? Like, this was crazy. You gotta you gotta get these people out of your life that don't really want to see you succeed. You can't just have people in your life that are just gonna feed right into your addiction. That's, you know, that's what's crazy, you know? 
is we got we all got people in our lives that are just great. They're willing to help us and support us. And then you got people in your lives that you think like you might be in love with them. I get that. But they're not adding anything to your life. They're not making you a better person. They're not doing anything for you. They're simply just there. Sometimes to kiss and hug. Sometimes just allow you not to be alone. But you gotta open your eyes. If I had a girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, that was willing to just let me fall apart like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm still talking like as if I'm you, if you're a girl, you know, you know what. But if you're willing to have a girlfriend or boyfriend that's willing to just do something like that, you're crazy. You know? I get love. Yeah, I understand it's hard to let go. I'm not here to tell you what to do. But think about it. You saw what happened here twice. These people are willing to let these people go on and die. Don't tell me it's not the truth. They're, they're willing to feed them to their death. I understand love. But to me, that's just... You're not loving them if you're willing to feed them to their death. Get those kind of people out of your life. Get them out. Now! Get them out now. Because you're going to end up dying this way. Because you're struggling by yourself already. You don't need somebody who's going to help you struggle. It's hard enough by yourself. If you got to be alone for a little bit, you're going to have to just do it. But be on the lookout for people who can help you. Okay? Go out here and reach out to these people who make this video or people who do this, the training and the dieting and all that. And reach out. Reach out to your doctor, your family, a therapist. I don't care what you got to do. Get rid of that person and reach out. Your life depends on it. As one of the first stars of season one, Henry Foots endeared himself to viewers with his kind disposition and sincere desire to attend his high school reunion looking his best. My total fear is death. I'm gonna die. I know I will die if I don't have the surgery. Thanks to his hard work, Henry went from 750 pounds all the way down to 275 pounds and was poised to put his past behind him. But in a heartbreaking twist, Henry passed away in 2013, several months after having a medical episode while driving a bus, according to Starcasm. The cause of death remains unknown. Man, I'm glad you got to live however long you got to live, man. We don't know how you died, but you know, you got the weight off and you were able to do a little bit more things, especially after you thought you were going to die from the weight complication. Um, man, that's good stuff, man. Props to you, man. Um, I mean, I know you can't hear me, you're not alive anymore, but this is just me speaking to you as if you were alive at that time. Because it's good to see. It's good to see, man, that you got to live a little before you went away. And you didn't go out like that. You didn't go out just an obese man that just said, you know what, forget it, and you died. And sometimes, like I said, you know, you lose the weight, and you're on your way down, and you die anyway. But, you know, you got to live a little bit more, so... Many of the stories on My 600 Pound Life have especially tragic beginnings, which trigger overeating to cope with difficult feelings. Season 7's Mercedes was no different. Mercedes weighed in at 773 pounds, was dependent on her young children for care, and was struggling with severe lymphedema. She clearly wanted to be able to live a normal life. I know it's hard for her because she want to do for us, and us not do for her. But Mercedes wasn't able to qualify for weight loss surgery. She had only lost 80 pounds and was full of excuses as to why. According to her Facebook profile, she's now living in Cincinnati, which is a long way from Houston, so she's likely off Dr. Now's program. Like I said, everybody getting time. I'm talking about everybody. Everybody's important to me. I don't care if she, I don't care if the people decided to do it or not, you know, meaning that doesn't mean that I don't feel like they deserve something to be talked about. Hopefully somebody um, is still reaching out to you guys and still trying to help you guys. It's very sad to see some of you guys decided to not go for this life and decided you still couldn't do it. Um, that addiction is strong and it's really hard to let go because it's hard to believe that you're ever going to lose that weight. But nonetheless, you got kids, you know, there's kids, you got kids out there who are dependent on their mom uh, to be there. It is, you know, it's, it's beautiful because some of these kids, you know, they love their moms and dads anyway. They don't care that they're fat, you know. You're still here for me, you know. I, still, I don't want to see you die, you know. And so it's just crazy that, you know, she's still willing to, you know, pass away. And her son looked relatively young. So, I mean, if she died in here just the next few years, he's going to be a young man when she's gone, you know. 
like I said, I've, I've been blessed to, you know, have my parents as long as I have. <clears throat> but I can't imagine visiting them when I was 18. And they're already gone. My mom's already dead. You know, that just, it just hurts to even think about. But I hope you've gotten it together, Miss Ed. One of the most shocking things ever on My 600 Pound Life was when Lisa Fleming's daughter discovered maggots in the folds of her mom's skin. It seemed like that would be the wake-up call that got Lisa motivated to stick to the diet that Dr. Now had prescribed her, especially since she weighed over 700 pounds. That was also on top of needing a team of paramedics to get her out of her house. Although Lisa did lose some weight under supervision, she gained it again when she was back home. Viewers watched as Lisa's manipulative tactics became apparent, arguably some of the worst in the show's history. By the end of her episode, Dr. Now was clearly frustrated with Lisa's unwillingness to change and dismissed her from his program. When all you do is give in to what's easy, you sometimes forget it's the more difficult challenges that make you stronger. Not even a year after Lisa appeared on My 600 Pound Life, she passed away at her home at age 50, according to Page Six. She had maggots in her fold, guys. Now that sounds pretty gross, but to me it just sounds really sad. That was that still wasn't enough. Still wasn't enough to turn her life around. Maggots in your folds. Not only that, you know, it, it, some of these you can see, man, and I don't want to. I don't want to. <clears throat> I don't want to come after the families or anything like that, you know, but I do want to say this. Some of those, I know y'all seen it, some of the kids and some of the um, um, adults and stuff like that, they're also obese or they're heading towards that life. And maybe, maybe hopefully seeing their parents and all this go through this may turn it around but sometimes it doesn't you know sometimes you, you end up doing exactly what your parents do you see that sometimes kids do exactly what their parents do or they're already heading towards that that last girl that we just saw who was talking to her mom or I'm assuming her mom or grandma she's she was bigger herself and I hope she looked at that and said it's not worth it it's, it's, it's not worth it it's not willing to have maggots in my folds and still not want to change you know and she said she, was, she manipulated people. That's what you do. That was probably one of the tougher ones for me. Maggots in the folds. Like, I can't get over that because that wasn't enough. Like, I'm not surprised, but it's like, you think... See, you people think... I don't want to say you people think, but... Sometimes there's wake-up calls, like I've had. But not everybody gets a wake-up call extremely and they, they change. These people are six, seven hundred, eight hundred pounds. It's not enough. It's not enough. And that's why people need to speak up against it early. Because by the, sometimes by the time they got there, it's too late, as we've seen before. It's too late. You know? Everybody can always change, but at the same time, if we speak up now, we can hopefully keep people from ever getting here. You know what I mean? Let's talk about that. Let's try to not get them to where they got maggots. You know, where they're not getting rashes, where they're not dying from heart attacks, where they can't breathe, infections, arthritis. You heard about all those things that, that one individual had. And all these people, I'm sure, if they don't have at least all of them, they have quite a few of those symptoms and uh, complications. So speak up now so we can keep people from ever getting here. Because even if they do drop the weight sometimes, it's still, it's still too late. Jean's life had not been an easy one, and it only seemed to go even further downhill during her episode of My 600 Pound Life. My life can't get any worse, but my body and my health are getting worse by the day. She first appeared in a messy home along with her mother and a father who struggled with severe mental illness. And by the time Jean and her mother Barbara arrived in Houston, things took a turn for the worse when Barbara had to be hospitalized due to illness. Then, Jean's father back home was discovered dead in his bed. Unfortunately, circumstances proved to be overwhelming for Jean, who decided she wasn't ready to follow Dr. Now's program. Instead of staying in Houston, she returned home. We certainly hope she'll get the help she needs in the future. That was a pretty quick one. Didn't really go into too much detail there. Um, once again, I hope you get better. I hope your life is thriving for you. Um, 
but I can't say it enough. You know, people don't just walk away from this obese life. And that's why you see these people who are um, still advocating for this, you know, the fat pride and all those, those are just people who can't walk away. Just the truth. James L.B. Bonner quickly became a season six fan favorite. There's days where I feel so worthless, I think. I'd be better off in the ground. After struggling with food and alcohol addiction and losing his foot after an ATV crash, James's weight ballooned to 650 pounds. Unable to care for himself, he decided to seek help from Dr. Now, determined to make a change. It was clear that James was a success story. He went from 650 pounds to less than half of that and was sticking to his diet and exercise regimen. Additionally, he had become a burgeoning social media star, with more than 8,000 Facebook followers, according to Starcasm. He was doing so well and losing so much weight that TLC halted his photo and video sharing, hoping to avoid any spoilers. But sadly, no follow-up episode would ever air. Tragically, James took his own life in 2018 at age 30, according to People magazine. I thought my brother was great. I had no worries. So I, I want to reach out to people out there that love alone is not going to save them. If you or someone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call or chat online with the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK or 8255. Wow, that was a pretty sad ending right at the end. He took his own life, um, probably dealing with depression. Um, we're not sure, none of us know. Um, but, uh, man, I'm glad he was able to inspire some people with a little bit of the life that he's left. So, um, that's good. Um, let me just say all this, man. You saw how some of these lives ended tragically. Now, some of them, there's been success stories. You've seen them with this life. But I want you guys to see that those success stories, they happen all the time. But these tragedies, they happen all the time. We don't get to see them on TV because they're not always posted on TV. Those are selected few people. But I want you to know that it ends like that sometimes for us obese people. It really does. And it's, it's just one step away, man. It's, we're just one step away. And that's why I can never, I just, man, it just drives me nuts. The whole video, I was still thinking about it. Like, how can you advocate for this life? Like, that's my thing. If they feel like they're not advocating for obesity to this limit, but they are. Because, like I said, you're only leading people down this path. Where's the threshold stop? I, I, I want to, I, maybe I haven't heard it or something, but I need them to come out and say, okay, how much is too much? I need you to say, how much weight is too much weight? And then we can start from there. Because obviously theirs is not enough. And so I need to hear them say, okay, well, if you're 500 pounds, that's too much. Okay, well, let's start at 500 pounds. Why is that too much? You know, those kind of things. Let's have those discussions. I need you to come out and talk to these people. What about these people who can't really be there for the kids? They got to dress them in the bedroom. And some of these people have tragically died. But you're perfectly okay with that. If you can rip... You're... Now, I just have a hard time saying how you're okay with that. How are you okay with that? You know, and then... Then we get we get called fat phobic. When you're... You've got to be the most... Hating people I've ever seen on fat people. To say that we're the ones hating, right? Because we're trying to help them. Y'all have got to be the most... Y'all got to be doing more harm than I've ever seen done to fat people. And I get the name calling and all that stuff. And that stuff hurts. But what you guys are doing... I'm just sorry. It just far exceeds anything I've ever seen. You're leading people to this. What we've seen in these videos. You're leading people to that by saying it's perfectly okay. Not telling them to get help, not telling them the truth, not telling them that you could die from this, not telling them that it's hard, not telling them that your bones hurt, not telling them that you may have arthritis, your heart hurts sometimes, you have trouble breathing. You don't tell them all that. So you want them to go down this path? That's got to be the most harmful thing I've ever heard. Now I've been called, I've, you know, I've been called a fat A word all the time, you know? And I've been made fun of it because I was fat. But... Nothing would hurt me more than somebody who would just let me go that way. But as long as they were nice to me all the way there. That's not being nice. 
That's got to be the coolest thing I've ever heard of. Just eat your way. That that video by Michelle, go, go check it out. But it's crazy. It's crazy. How can you let somebody eat themselves to death, man? And say, yes, please give in to that addiction. That's, that's perfectly fine. Go on ahead. Wow. That's how you're really living? That's really how y'all living out here? And us, voices like us, we don't make it out. You know? Not right now. We're reaching as many people as we can. I'm reaching as many as I can. But we're not the ones on magazines. We're not on the one on the news. We're not the ones getting any of that shine. The, the ones who've ever gotten that kind of shine, they just get destroyed. Because people are all against them. Right? Yeah, you got some people who are on their sides. But a lot of people are just, they don't think. Like, I don't get it. Do people not think? Because none of these people who are advocating for you not to be fat, or at least some of them, are not trying to do it just because they hate you. They're just saying this is not the healthy way to go. So why do you think we hate you? The people who are telling you to go die like these people have, those are the ones you should really start thinking about. Do they really care about me? Because if somebody cares about you, why the heck would they advocate for that life? Tell me. Because I'm trying to figure it out. Tell me how somebody can care about you and advocate for that life. Tell me. Because it is, like, just use all your logic in the world and tell me, how does that say that's okay? Because where does it stop? Where does it stop? You may say, I'm not that big right now, or they're not doing that. But just telling you to love yourself and eat however you want, tell me how this is not where you're headed. You may not make it this far. You may die way before then. If you make it to 60 or whatever at this weight, did you really live? Because no, you were trapped inside a body that really couldn't do much for you. It was failing you for years until you went away. You know? I, I, I saw that stupid post about the grave and said, live healthy, uh, worked out or whatever. I lived healthy, ate healthy, and I still died. It's like, of oh, course, because tragedies happen every day. Of course. But you cannot make that an excuse to just let people go off and live their life to, and just lead them to death. You should speak up for that. It's not right. It's not. It's not right. I, how can you not get that? It's not right. If you're sitting there thinking this is right to let people do this, there's something wrong with you. There really is. Have some love in your heart. This ain't right. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I live right and still die. That, that doesn't make what you're doing any better. Just because somebody was really healthy and they died in a car crash does not mean you should just eat yourself to death. How is that right? How does that make any sense at all? That's like that's like me saying, oh, this person lived, lived healthy and didn't do heroin, and they still died. So I'm just going to advocate for everybody to use heroin. It doesn't matter if you die or not. I'm pushing as hard as I can. I want you to just love yourself and your heroin addict body. That doesn't make any sense. We don't do that for the people who are struggling with anorexia. We're not going to do it for people who struggle with obesity. We just not. We try to help anybody who's just leading themselves to a dangerous path. If they get to live, that's what we're trying to do. We're just at least giving them the opportunity to live. You just want them to die anyway. Quit it. Make some changes. Man, dang. Man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. And I'm probably going to put this video up as soon as I finish. I mean, you should see it. Um, here, in a few hours. Probably right after you saw the last video. But, um, yeah, I made this one longer, guys. Um, I've seen a couple of your comments. Um, by the way, Stacy, Stacy J., I'm shouting you out in the video. No, I'm never going to hit my head on the camera. As you can see, my camera is actually facing at me. Um, so, it's not like my camera is sticking out like out here where I can clock it. Like, I, you know, my head is not going to hit it because I can see my camera, you know. So, there's no way I'm going to actually hit it. But funny, though. Funny. I wish I could laugh more, but I'm kind of in a serious mood. So, but I did see Stacey J. Shout out to you. Um. But uh, yeah, these people are advocating for trash. Open your eyes. Quit letting these people die. 
Because if you're advocating for that, I gotta say it for you. And if every, if anybody's watched a couple of my videos, you know what I'm about to say. You can say it with me. You're killing people, man. I'm sorry. But if you advocate or do something or glorify something that's going to lead people to death, that's going to kill them, this life right here, you're okay with that? If you're okay with doing that, leading somebody to death, then I got no love for you. No love. And I hope one day I get to meet you guys. I really want to meet you guys. Not because I want to do anything bad to you because I don't. I just want to talk to you. I really do because I really want to hear your mindset of how you can lead people to this life and allow them to die. And be okay with it. Just let them go on. Now I understand it's their own lives. They can make their own decisions. But don't you have a job with your platform? Your millions of people. Don't you have a job and responsibility to at least warn them against it? You're just going to say nothing? You in fact you advocate against them being healthy? You're using the platform to do that. So you dang sure have a responsibility to do the other way. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Y'all have a blessed, blessed day.